Since I became afraid and lost my confidence after getting attacked multiple times, I tried one of the world's best self-defense systems and took part in some of their most intense tests to see if it can help me overcome my fear of getting attacked and gain my confidence back. This journey started in this city known as Panerjis, which in the past used to be known as the Little Chicago, as it used to be the most crime-ridden city in the whole country. It wasn't uncommon for rival gangs to have shootouts in their cars right here in this street, and getting one was frequent as crime was at an all-time high. And yes, this was the city that I grew up in. As a teenager, I got attacked dozens of times, and actually, this is the exact location where one time, five guys surrounded me and asked me for my mobile phone. At the time, I was a student of martial arts, and I expected my martial arts skills to help me, but it didn't. As one of the guys grabbed me, instead of using flashy martial arts moves, I just went blank and instead just punched him in the head. The guy went down on his knees as the other four guys started screaming at each other in panic because they clearly didn't expect a single guy to fight back five guys. Because of my martial arts conditioning, I wasn't smart enough to just run away. Instead, I took a step back, went to a traditional martial arts stance, looking at the hands of the guys if they have a knife, ready to defend myself. Suddenly I felt my face, eyes and mouth burning because one of the guys pepper sprayed me. Luckily I then finally realized that this is my cue and I started running away this way even though I couldn't see anything with my eyes burning. As I was running through these trees I would open my eyes just for a split second to see where they are so I could evade them. All I saw were just bright lights. I was stopping cars like some drunk guy. Finally I ran into this store with my face all red and swollen and I asked for a security guard for some help. Unfortunately, this wasn't the first nor the last time I got attacked. And the more times I got attacked, the more I lost confidence in myself and the martial art that I was doing. When I told my martial arts instructor about the encounter, he told me to simply train more. But even though I did, my lack of confidence and fear only continued to grow. And that fear became paralyzing. Every time I walked out into the street, I was afraid that I will get attacked. And whenever I saw a group of more than two guys walking around, my heart started pounding. Over the years, I continued to learn various combat sports and self-defense systems, and gradually my fear decreased and confidence grew. But the confidence that I gained didn't seem to be enough, as some of the doubt and fear remained. Whenever a situation arises where there may be a fight, I still have a sense of fear and lingering doubt, wondering, what if I don't know enough? What if I won't be able to defend myself and others? I was concerned that if I won't be able to overcome this hesitation, then I will be paralyzed by fear and doubt all my life. It was clear I needed to find a solution, and a potential solution soon appeared. A few weeks ago, I received an opportunity to try out for 48 hours one of the best self-defense systems in the world. The problem was, this opportunity was not in my country, but instead, it was in Spain, a four-hour flight from my hometown Vilnius, and I was already struggling to find enough time to tackle all of my other projects. I also had a hip injury, which prevented me from training regularly, and by taking this opportunity, I would be risking making my injury worse. On top of it all, there was also no certainty that 48 hours of trying out even the most effective self-defense system would necessarily help me overcome my fear and hesitation. But the chance that it would was there. Despite all the hurdles, it was clear that if I will miss this opportunity and won't do anything about it, I will certainly not overcome my internal doubts, so I decided to take the risk and booked a flight to Barcelona, Spain, and then made my way to Valencia together with my wife, Gabby. As we made our way to the hotel, here I met Andy Norman, the founder, and Greg, the co-founder of Defense Lab, a global self-defense organization with over 30,000 members worldwide. Andy and Greg have been training in self-defense for decades, and they've both been in countless street fights in their younger days. They were also joined by Miguel, one of their top instructors, who Andy described as silent but deadly as he is one of the most polite people out there who turns into a beast when it's time to defend himself. As I sat down with Andy and his team to get to know each other, I soon learned that initially Andy had a similar journey to mine, which also featured failure and disillusionment. This is the story, pivotal story that changed my life. I was walking home with a friend and there was five guys sat on a wall and one of them threw a bag of chips at my friend. Me doing my karate and thinking I was Bruce Lee. I just kind of turned around and offered everybody, I went, come on then. Obviously to which all five guys stood up. I like I bossed three of them, I ate the fourth one and I ran away from the fifth one. In the midst of it, I broke my hand and I had a complete meltdown. So everything I've been doing, nothing worked. And in the end, it's like nutting, spitting, you know, just, just 
fighting yeah. instinct and I quit martial arts that night. After that, Andy discovered Jeet Kune Do, the martial art of Bruce Lee and continued to become one of the top JKD instructors as he also studied combat sports. But even then, he didn't feel he discovered the answers he was looking for to learn effective self-defense. That is, until he met Gusto Diegues, who was also looking for the same answers. Andy and Gusto began training together, testing and looking for the best possible solutions for effective self-defense, until eventually they developed the Casey fighting method. By the way, the same system that was used to create the iconic fighting style of Batman in the Dark Knight trilogy, something that I will explore with Andy in my next video. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe. Andy and Gusto continued to develop and evolve their system for over 20 years, while always focusing on effectiveness for the street as the priority. And in 2012, Andy moved on to create Defense Lab, the still ever-growing and constantly evolving self-defense system which I was about to try. Once we finished our initial conversation, we made our way to the headquarters and filming studio of Defense Lab, where I was finally going to experience the system myself and go through some of the system's most intense self-defense tests. Once the training started, I soon learned that one of the main aspects of Defense Lab is to utilize and weaponize our natural instincts, such as covering and protecting the head. How would you protect the seven knockout points? Seven. seven. One, yeah. two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Major knockouts, not all. Your danger points on the head are these, okay? With one position, can you defend all seven major knockout points? One hand on the back of the neck, and then this one is just like a hook. We'll just hook, pull it in, in tight so you feel like your head is not a big space, that it's like kind of tucked in. This was a simple and brilliant solution, as it not only could withstand a lot of impact without having prior training, <laughs> But this form also allows the practitioner to defend the knockout points when multiple attackers are involved, since otherwise, whatever action you do, you open yourself up to someone else's attack. This form, called Shape 1, is a variation of an even more simple approach that Andy calls the Thinking Man, where initially both of our hands are placed on our head, just like what we instinctually do when protecting ourselves. But that's where the weaponization comes in. If I just do a simple basic thinking man, basic thinking man, but what's my objective? obviously is to enter. The beauty behind the thinking man and shape one is that if instead we try to learn various complicated martial arts moves just like I did in my teenage years back in Little Chicago, we rely heavily on our hope that during the chaos of an unpredictable attack we will be able to perform these complex motions and apply the right one at the right time, something that creates a lot of uncertainty. Instead, Defense Lab offers a much more simple and effective solution by using and improving what we already do naturally and continues to teach movements from there and that's where the defending and attacking at the same time approach comes in just just smash an entry he throws a tie elbow can he attack an elbow yes travels inside or hits this or hits me can you destroy a knee with the same thing you're not fighting an idiot or an untrained person you're training a person that has spent one year two years three years developing how to attack this and if i do this look one, the second shot is to take my head off, to go like one, boom. One of the reasonings behind this approach is that when you face multiple attackers, you won't have time and ability to defend and then to attack, since blows will be coming your way from multiple directions, and as soon as you try to strike, you will open yourself up. Also, when facing multiple attackers, each split second that you spend involved in it increases the risk of getting hurt, so having the ability to defend and attack at the same time may be an extremely valuable skill, and as it happens to be, facing multiple attackers is one of the major focuses of the defense lab system, as that's a very common self-defense situation when a group of people chooses a single victim to attack. Dealing with multiple attackers is an extremely difficult situation. To fully grasp how overwhelming it is to deal with multiple attackers, Andy asked three of his guys to hit me with mitts at the same time, while I had to try to protect myself without fighting back. Three, two, one, off you go. A little more pressure guys, a little more. Okay, time. To make things worse, Andy then turned off the lights to simulate a scenario of low light conditions, while I still had to protect myself from free attackers, which turned out to be even more harder than I expected, as I wasn't even able to see what attacks were coming from where, and then to experience how vulnerable I become to attacks when trying to strike back, I had to protect myself and then strike the mitts whenever one of the attackers called it out. The experience of protecting myself against free attackers shook me emotionally. And so after we went to dinner, where even there the explorations didn't stop, and dropped by one of the training locations of Defense Lab that is used to simulate a realistic environment, and where after seeing a dead body outline, my wife, naturally, decided to try to fit into it, during this whole time I couldn't get the experience of getting beat up by multiple attackers out of my head. 
After a sleepless night, I woke up early before the second day of training to a beautiful morning. But everything that I could think of was that after having trained in martial arts for more than half of my life, acquiring skills in traditional forms and combat sports, striking and grappling, I never really learned to effectively deal with multiple attackers. Not only that, the fear and doubt that I had about being attacked initially was nowhere near subsiding, since one of the main times in my life when I was at great risk was the time when I was attacked by five guys. So my question remained. Can this self-defense system really help me with my fear and doubt? Will this fear remain with me for the rest of my life? Or maybe I am looking for the answer in the wrong way altogether? There was only one way to find out. The time came to go back to the DL headquarters where this time Andy and his team were focused on helping me learn the skills of their system. Attacking this limbo, it's like, it's, it's the, the concept of, of trying to create this. The object is, 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 to, is to smash this and if you can enter and you can see where the concept really is to smash the face or to smash the limb. Training, sometimes it looks like we're just kind of being nice, but it's obvious you can't smack people like that. It might not be the most preferable thing for me to try and do this one, but on somebody your own height, this is just such a nice route in. It just helps you go one, two. This is to help you get there. Punch. Open your hand, and just go and lay on it. Jab, open your hand, and now just go and lay on it, literally. But now if I just provoke it, go, you know, and I'm touching that, what are you going to throw? When he throws it, you attack it. So that provocation is like one, two, you're like one, two, three, and we start the entry point with that. Bring it back, move. But don't even chase his hand. If it goes slightly wide, okay. I'm just gonna go through this little catch it. You focus on him, I go one, you go, I'm just gonna fill the timing gap. So now what he's gonna do, he is gonna feed you a jab and kind of throw you a pad fed cross. I also got to experience the impact of such an elbow strike, and even though Greg was going light, it was quite something. <laughs> We then practice defending on the knees, something most martial arts neglect, although it's not uncommon in a fight to stumble. He starts to rotate like a blend look, he's trying to get his elbows working. It's different than if he just stays on two knees and punches the pads, you go, you know, what, what's this? Well, as soon as he starts moving and trying to blend things up a little bit, you know, you can still do this, but it's like, oh, you got more. Okay. My first instinct would have been go for like try to like you know take it down. It's not bad and stupid, but you know, you're back to this. Yeah. You're back yeah. to like right, right, right. <laughs> and we took a look at what Andy calls table manners, developing skills at fighting by the table, a likely scenario that is usually neglected and not trained at by martial arts and combat sports. If Greg does grab me, you know my objective is to try and hit. And obviously, you know really fill the space so he's not got any. How do you use the table? How do you spin the table? How do you create this kind of energy so it touches him, you know, kicking the table so it gun spikes him? That's a study in itself. Yet then, it was time to experience the multiple attackers test again. And even though now I was familiar with parts of the defense lab system, I still had my fear and doubt lingering within me. So before the final test, I decided to ask Andy and Greg how they deal with fear and doubt themselves. If it's a genuine trauma, it's a, a really hard journey. We put them through the same process but obviously with care and attention of like putting them in the middle of a stress and you know, being too and pushed and sure. The only way we found that has helped people is to put them in that environment and slowly build something back up so they, they can't have face to face. And that's exactly where the practice of constantly training with multiple attackers comes in. Is it easy? No. Can you lose immediately? Yes. But do you start to find discovery of yourself about an environment that might be slightly fearful of? Why? Because you don't understand it. But you do this every day, you become a different animal. And this changes the mindset. And especially of the average student coming in, put them in here, they become accustomed to this stress, this chaos, and little by little, they mutate to start fighting back. Suddenly, it all started to make sense. Until now, I was obsessed with finding the best self-defense system that would remove my fear and doubt. But finding a good system was only part of the puzzle. It turns out what really mattered was for me to gradually go out of my comfort zone, to challenge and expose myself in a safe environment to similar self-defense situations that initially caused the fear and doubt in me. And this was the perfect opportunity to do it. So, with the right guidance, and now with a different mindset, I was ready to face the multiple attacker's test again.
The experience was still challenging, but with the newly learned skills and mindset, this time I wasn't doing the exercise to pull off the perfect technique. This time, I was there to sharpen the steel, to expose myself to a situation that I was fearful of in order to get accustomed to it and make it my own. It turns out I wasn't on the wrong path by training martial arts and fighting until now, and that indeed helped me, but I just needed a different mindset, additional challenges, and knowledge. And although I only touched the peak of the iceberg during my first introduction to Defense Lab, I came back home with a different relationship to my training, my fear and doubt, trusting that by continuing to push myself out of my comfort zone, I will become even more accustomed to it, eventually fully overcoming it.